Hello everybody, this is Franz Cantor here, cartoonist, illustrator, uh, teacher to um, Tinker Tailor Spy, caricaturist, you name it. Um, I'm here again today at the Australian Cartoon Museum. I'm joined once more with the president of the Australian Cartoon Museum. Jim Bridges. Right. Anything you'd like to say about anything you do your, your um, my, my museum <laughs> character <spiel>. expression? <laughs> um, all right. So this is me. So the, today we've got a subject. We're trying to close things around, right? We're trying to close things around like the Three Stooges, in which case we've got the Four Stooges. So I've done caricatures of each of those, and I've done uh, Peter Sellers, and I've done um, Spike, Milligan. Spike Milligan. Yes, I keep forgetting his name. I'm terrible with names. Uh, today we're doing Harry Seacombe. Now, this is Harry Ooh. Seacombe, one of the goons, okay? So this is a photograph that we're, we're working from. Uh, this is him, as, you, as a lot of people would remember him, this sort of portly character who sings in this sort of deep Welsh voice, very loud. Uh, this is an example of his explosive personality. I think it kind of came about with, you know, the rubbing shoulders with, uh, with the talents of um, Spike Milligan and, uh, and Peter Kellers. Uh, Peter Sellers, Peter yeah. Kellers. Uh, this is him in Oliver, of course, you know, which is uh, Mr. one of Bumble. his... Mr. Bumble, he had a, a famous catchphrase, which he could do, more? More? Yeah. He wants more? Yeah. So he's Welsh, right? So he's got this very deep uh, association with, the, with singing through the mountains, very loud, very sort well, of not tenor, everybody comes out tenor of the, voice. Not everybody comes out of the womb who's in Welsh that sort of have voices like him. No, he, he's got a, a really them. loud, <laughs> like he's like a... Tom tr- Jones! He's like a, tr- he's like a trumpet, isn't he? He's like yes. A, a tr- you know, or... Yes. So you were mentioning somebody else, uh, quite recent, uh, uh, Blind Brian Blessed. He's got a, that sort of loud trumpet uh, sound. Do you reckon he's uh, Welsh too? We'll have to look at him up. We'll have to look him we'll up. We'll have to draw him one day. It doesn't have to be. It's not an yeah. exclusively Welsh thing. Anyway, um, we're going to try to capture his sort of zany, um, uh, uh, zany personality. Yeah. Now, the thing with um, uh, people who are portly... Yeah, we had a, we did the thing with this. portly people, right? You tend to say, oh, they've got a round head like an orange. There you go, that's a caricature. No, not, no, no. Because caricature dislikes uh, simplicity. Caricature relies on, on detail. And detail is something we, 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 look at deta- we look at the contours of shapes, around shapes. So one of them is around the head. So simplifying something um, may not get you the likeness that you desire. Yeah, but nobody has a head like that, really. Uh, Charlie I mean, Brown has a head like yeah, that. Yeah, but he's not a real person. He is and to I'm me. So I think, you know, mostly looking at people's heads, people's heads are, are very... Well, the egg-shaped, egg-shaped. Egg yeah. Either, yeah. you know, an inverted egg yeah. or a... But it's Either just that with his, he, with his enthusiasm and his, his rumbunctiousness, it's just sort of like um, you see him as a rounded face. You just do. He's I got big cheeks a, and everything's yeah, big the, about him, you know. Yeah, but the cheeks and everything is sort of muscles. I can understand why you've pinched it here as opposed to making a complete circle. Well, you know I what, I, under- I kind of like this sort of 50s um, curly hair uh, uh, thing and I kind of also like the fact that You've got a bit of rhythm coming in yeah. to the shape, you know. Yeah. Um, there's a, also like an offset rhythm, so I want to try to uh, get that. Um, let's talk about that in a sec. I've done like a quick. I'm just trying to get the likeness. I try to get the shapes from the pencil, from the rough pencil into the uh, into this area, and we're going to try to get to, um, capture some of the uh, details and the likeness. Um, as we go, so let's try to push ahead, shall we? With, with, with greater dispatch. Uh, you know what might help is a pair of glasses, because I can't see from this angle. All right, so um, also have to, may have to tilt the uh, photograph up a little bit, because it's catching light from the, uh, the iPad is catching light from the spot. So um, 
simplification and exaggeration is the order of the day for caricature. So I am simplifying the, the nose a little bit. Uh, thank you. I am simplifying the nose a little bit. You know, and some of the elements, like the ears, perhaps would would require that similar sort of um, uh, approach. Um, okay, so the muscles of the face. We'll talk about that. Um, there's a bit of he pushing. obviously works out, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. So there's pushing, right? Pushing, which raises the eyebrows, which compress the skin at the top. So you're going to get some pinching over here, some wrinkles up, up here, right? Uh, and this is distinctive because not only are they there from the, the, the reference point, but you have to understand why they're there. What's the forces at work here? So what's the underlying current? You know, the, um, the, tidal, the tidal forces of the face. Um, if you're doing Bert Newton, of course, it's the big moon face itself is a tidal force on its own. Um, the, uh, the forces of pulling and pushing, like a push-me-pull-you type of effect, right, of, of these um, fleshy forms, they give, oh, there's quite a bit of, uh, hang on, there's a bit of contrasting... I have to be careful about making them too dark. I'm, I'm talking and, and drawing them at the same time, but I have to be careful about how dark they make them because it would change the importance of, uh, of how, uh, changing the relevance of these individual elements. So there's a pushing up into the head over the skull, right? There's also um, other things which push up and out around the mouth, Okay, these sort of also push in to the eyes. Okay, so there's this rhythm of pushing and pulling. Okay, um, anything that pushes up, pull, uh, uh, has a corresponding um, uh, feeling of pushing in and out. Sorry, outwards from the mouth um, to reveal the choppers. That's the technical term. The choppers. Um, there's also the pushing back of flesh, which reveals the dimples. In this case, they're very, very deep. Um, and the dimples, the neck is kind of joined in concert into the torso itself, um, not in a very unkind way. I'm not saying he has no neck. I'm just saying that the forces at work here are very prevalent. They're very powerful forces of muscles that contort in order mm. to create a sense of energy. Mm. Now, remember, this man has a deep voice, right? Mm. So his, his area of uh, center of gravity would be in the chest. He would be very chesty and talking like this and singing. And therefore, this is his soundboard, right, the chest. So it has to force its way up through this trunk, this open, mm. um, you know, baritone, wide uh, mm. vehicle, mm. which is the throat. Right? Keep That's that interesting in because you tend to draw people with skinny necks. Yes. And, and But I, I wonder what you're going to do with him. And well, I, I have to... It's a big head, just, small body. The, the way you just described that was wonderful. Yeah. So it's a big head, small body. But these mm. are things, you know, when you're drawing, this it, it may not even occur to you while you're doing that, but you're doing it unconsciously. You're going through this checklist in your brain. Mm. Uh, this is, you know, this is a cheek. What's happening here? There's pulling and pushing. And sometimes if you ever see kids, when they draw, they stick their tongue out. You ever seen that uh, apparition? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Why do they do that? It's not food. They're not drawing food. Well, they're drawing it because what they're doing is it's a, a very... It's a form of concentration. No, it's a... No, it isn't. It it's... is. No, it's not. They don't... Con... You never well, concentrate with your tongue out. Well, I've seen people drawing with their tongue out on yeah, the but side. That's not concentration. What is it? It's L emotional. For flies. Maybe, but it's an emotional... Uh, reaction because the pencil is touching and stroking and creating volumes and form and these are sort of like clay it's like putty yeah. right so it's very tactile and fleshy right so people get very um, involved emotionally in the process of drawing itself and that's why they tend uh, sometimes not always sometimes uh, they stick their tongue out so they try to um, uh, uh, in, they try to uh, accommodate the the tactileness 
of the subject that they're that they're playing with. You'll see it with if you could give somebody clay or play doh, right? After after a while, how did you make a tube out of um, blue tack? Blue tack. Well, it's, it's you asked for it, so yeah. I dropped it in. You know. All right. Um, <laughs> um, well, I don't know about that because I know that when I see people concentrating in particular, yeah. they tend to do it. I mean, who was it? I went. Have you ever saw, thought why they do it? I went and saw Loudon Wainwright. The Animals third. don't do it. Monkeys don't do it. Yeah. What's there's something? Ta- there's something. Well, animals do. No, they, they don't stick their tongues out when they draw. Monkeys no, do not. No. <laughs> monkeys do not. If they are, if they're inclined to make are marks. Are you a or world something, expert on monkeys drawing? I am. I'm an expert oh, on, okay. on drawing. Well, look, I, you know, I'll, I don't believe monkeys I'll draw. Defer. Monkeys make marks. I'll too. defer. I'll defer to you. But these are it's these just are representational I've, marks. I've seen um, Loudon Wainwright the third. Um, Who's that? Uh, Who's that? Yeah. Oh, well, he was going to be the new Dylan, but that's another story. Who's anyway, Dylan? he's a singer-songwriter. Dylan Thomas or Bob Dylan? Um, Robert Zinnerman. I don't know who that is. That's Bob Dylan's real name. Right. Ah, okay. Anyway, um, I'm as thick as when, when he's playing a, a, an intricate piece of music, he tends to stick his tongue out while he's playing that bit because he's sort of trying to get his... You know, he's trying to remember it because and, and it's get a it physical right. and, and trying to get it right. He's trying yeah. to get it right. So it's a form of concentration. No, it's well, not. it's a trope. No, you can fight all you want. It's already no. a trope. It's not concentration. It's, okay, it, it's it, accom- it accommodates. I'm going to have to go through about ten million cartoons no. and find at least five examples of that happening. It's not concentration. It it is it accommodates concentration. Ah. It accompanies concentration. But in itself, it's not concentration. No, of course it's not by itself. Because I don't but stick it does my tongue out to concentrate. Con- it does accompany... Oh, well, we meet... It can. We it meet can. in the middle. No, we don't meet in the middle because it's nothing to do with, with the consciousness. Concentration is to do with the brain. This is something else. This is a tactile feeling. It's why, you know, people... Um, if you want to go... Look, this is... I'll, I'll show you this. Get some Play-Doh or some putty or some you know, blue tack or something, and start to manipulate it with your fingers. Blue tack. I never leave home okay? without it. So this is a tactile, yep. physical property, yep. okay? Yep. So that's what I'm trying to do with a pencil. Now, most people are unaware of this process. They have a tactile feeling of creating a physical form, right, with a pencil. Now, the two things don't necessarily go together because we, we, we rely on pencils to write marks, right? They have no, absolutely no meaning until we make the marks in some form of order, right? To Carl, create Carl Marx. Yeah, brothers, to create brothers. well to create meaning with the oh, marks. So okay. we're creating these recognizable symbols yeah. and shapes. Um, but in drawing you do symbols and shapes that have a great deal more meaning than the words themselves. Like you could draw face. You could write face, right? But the minute you start to draw a face it becomes a different matter, different thing. It's, it has more relevance. It has more meaning. Okay, here I'm drawing a, a sad face. Um, so just, just a symbol. This, these symbols here... I've, I've never seen Charlie Brown actually cry. So these symbols here have much more uh, uh, relevance than the word for face. Okay? It has more flexibility and it has more interpretation. Well, I mean, the other if, thing if you with can't this speak is, English, you this, wouldn't recognise that, but you'd recognise Well, the that. other thing with drawing... It's like, universal. The, the other thing with drawing, too, is that you're actually creating things that have uh, a relative... Um, uh, uh, um, relative... Inf- um, relative similarity to the physical world. The physical world is obviously three-dimensional. Yeah. So the, the, uh, well, you're yeah, actually but, but, referencing three-dimensional concepts. But you're talking about concepts. depth. You're talking about depth, aren't you? Yes. Drawings, can, drawings have depth. Drawings yeah. have depth. It's part of it's the... the illusion of depth. Well, yes. You have, like, you put marks, it's, which yeah. are which On a flat plane, that's lines. not a sculpture. Then you create On, shapes, yeah. and the next step is... is to bring your shapes forward. Well, yeah, it's to create yeah, form. Yeah. It's a three-dimensional construct. Yeah. But it doesn't exist in itself. It's, it's something that we uh, attribute to it emotionally. We're emotionally yeah. uh, connected to the drawings. 
And this is a very and unique we never process asked the question, what for about monkeys the, like we ne- us. We never asked the question, what about the back of his head? So this, we never asked that question, do we're, we? We're, we're very special monkeys, okay? Very special monkeys. We're monkeys that can tell stories with drawings. That's, yes. what, that's all we are. That's all we are, right? We're not, not related in any way, shape, or form to any real like other monkeys. You we're heard just it here very first, special folks. Monkeys. That's the short version of evolution. We're white apes. We're very special Apes that have a... Some are um, hairier than others. Yeah. Yeah, some with red hair, some with big schnozzers and things like that. So anyway, the idea is that... Uh, I don't know where we've gotten from from here, or from, from point A to point B. We've, we've um, uh, uh, lost ourselves in point Z. So... Um, or Z well, you started English. off talking about the round shape. Well, and and before you started drawing, I said draw him as a round head, and you said no, I don't, no, that's no, because I don't want to limit the ability of that's the right. Pencil and then you explained everything, these ex- details. See? You explained everything about yeah. this. And There's then, a lot of action going on yeah. in the face, yes. which I would love to uh, uh, capture with a pencil. Actually, when you start doing, um, uh, and plus, you know, when, variety when, and when you do um, lack anatomy, of symmetry. When you start to um, do your drawings after learning anatomy, do you actually draw the muscles in and then rub them out? Or do you know what I mean? Do you actually do you actually draw part of the, this thing that makes the face go like that, mm. uh, there, there, and then rub it out? And it's, you know yeah. what I mean? No, there are exercises that you do that, but they're exercises. So um, you don't draw the skull and then draw the muscles over the skull and then draw the face. You don't do stuff like that. No, you just have to know how to do what, what no. the muscles do. That, that's the whole no. learning of an anatomy for drawing is to learn where the muscles, how they work. No, well, kind of. You're uh, aware of. Look, you're aware of moving forms. Yes. Okay? Um, you're aware also of underlying structures, especially cheekbones. The skull comes through yeah. in various ways. You know, through the through the actual face through the form, um, areas that are, that are tight around the, the cheekbones and things. He has a lot of muscle, yeah. which are trans, that's going over these sharp corners yeah. and blending them. So he has a very round, uh, he has very round features, okay? Mm. They're not round because he's fat. They're round because he's incredibly muscular. He is well, a he is very, reasonably very muscular on the face. rotund side. As a matter yes, of fact, when he, was a... knight, when he was knighted by the Queen, mm. uh, he came out and said, uh, my new name is Circumference. Mm. Yeah, it's too uh, simplistic to say that his size is round. It's too simplistic yeah. to okay. say that. Okay. What, it, what you're actually looking for is this, this incredible lattice work of uh, intersecting forms and shapes that, that are built up by the storing and releasing of energy mm. and the energy is his you know it, it would manifest in his voice um, but also in his actions I think because he's very has a high center of gravity he's very chesty mm. you know because of his voice and things but also in the actions it affects a lot of that uh, the top half of the picture at the moment looks a bit like a, a, a very young um, uh, I've got no respect I've got no respect what's that guy's name Rodney Dangerfield? Yeah, he looks a bit like Rodney Dangerfield with his bulging eyes and his nose. Um, but that smile is not Well, I, I can't remember I've Rodney seen... Dangerfield's face, but the, except for the eyes, yeah. you know, the, um, the rest of the thing, it would be a similar sort of... It would be a similar pattern of, mm. of, of gathering of muscles I'm, I'm of I'm just realising that I've never seen Rodney... There's a lot of Rodney, um, pushing up here. I've never seen Rodney Dangerfield with a big grin on his face, ever. Yeah, it's well. The grin would sort of give you the the um, uh, the wider use mm. of the muscle, the wider, the bigger expression, the bigger emotional uh, um, gesture. So you know this this grin. He's got a huge, big um, um, top smile. Lip. Yeah. And um, it wraps around these great big noshes. <laughs> like, <laughs> noshes. Yeah, these great big noshes. noshes. Big, bright, well, some people out there who teeth. don't know what noshes are. Well, they call them noshes anyway. 
because you nosh with them. Ah, oh, of course. Nosh, nosh, nosh. Yeah. So um, he has a beautiful uh, set of um, choppers. Bucky Beavers, and, yeah. And... Um, Sorry, I... What's Bucky Beaver? That's from a commercial. Yeah, he had... Brusha, brusha, brusha. That's it. Ipana. Yeah. Ipana. Big, um, big teeth. Yeah. So, um, uh, see what advertising does for me now. I've gone down a he's rabbit hole of advertising. Yeah, yeah. I adore advertising. Um, um, most I people... Love, most the most people... powerful advertising that's ever existed is cartoon advertising. It is. I agree um, with you just totally. Just unbelievable. The language and, and why the visual don't language. Use it, it's beyond me. I know why they don't use it, because it's too bloody powerful. Oh. It's just too much... Um, we want subtle advertising. Well, you want advertising that doesn't get you into trouble. With, oh, um, okay. With mother groups, mother's groups. Mother's groups. Well, yeah, because they, they erroneously think that cartoons are only a tribute to... Uh, children. They only. They only. Um, oh, I think that's communicate an old idea. to children. I think that's an old idea. I think that. Yeah, but I mean, peop, you can't I was, I was stop lucky people because from of, thinking I, that. You know, bad psychologists think that all the time. Yeah. They think that games are dangerous. They think that, you know, um, comics are dangerous. They think that cartoons are dangerous. Everything is dangerous, dangerous, dangerous. Um, they never once think about well. Uh, let's let's not jump to conclusions. They're, they're thinking all the time. Let's jump to conclusions. <laughs> We're all crazy here. Well, my mum was a saint because in the 50s, she's the only mother I knew who didn't burn her um, kids' comics. As a matter of fact, she used to buy them for me and read them first. Your comics? Your yeah. mum would read your comics? Well, she used to buy them for me too. No, this is pre-Spider-Man. God, the 50s. You about Little Lotta. No. She'd buy you Little Lotta. No, no. She had taste. Whoa! The Phantom. You hear that? The Them Phantom. Spartan words, man. The Phantom. Mm -hmm. I think she identified with, um, with uh, what's her name? Diana? Diana. Yeah, Diana. Diana in, Palmer. In the Skull Cave. Well, do you know that she was, um, she was uh, a lawyer engaged to the Phantom for 50 years before they got married? Wow. And within about six months, they had two kids, um, dinosaurs for pets, and lived in a special uh, island. Dinosaurs for pets. Bi dinosaurs for pets. So it was like you a lost have a valley dog. of... You didn't have dogs. They had dinosaurs on this special island. But that's another story. Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. Maybe I should have read more Phantoms. And um, when he got married, do you know who his, um, the Phantom's uh, best man was? Nope. Mandrake. Um, because they're both written by Lee Falk. Yeah. And Did Lee just, Falk attend? Um, well, he wrote it. He in, couldn't appear in his own comic? Uh, he did a few times, apparently. Hello, I'm the writer of uh, Phantom. I'm oh, glad to meet you, Dad. Well, no, because it goes back to 400 years, remember? Grandpa? <laughs> great, great, great grandpa? <laughs> anyway, um, he's standing here waiting for the, um, the bride to turn up, as they do, mm. and they're getting a bit edgy, and um, Mandrake, the magician, leans over with his oily hair and says to the Phantom... I thought you'd never do it. And the fact that they've been engaged for 50 years, it was pretty funny, I thought. Where did you read this? In the newspaper or in the comic? Waited for the reprint of the oh, no, newspaper well, comic. Um, in the, in Australia's... The... Um, it's funny because the Phantom... You, we'll have to do Lee Falk because he's a really interesting character. Is he? Yeah. Um, he was going to make a film about Mandrake with Fellini, all sorts of stuff. He knew a lot of people... He wrote plays, he put on plays, he wrote a lot of stuff. He was, we'll have to talk about Lee Falk, and I'll, I'll save those stories for another day. Yeah. But let's get him back to this guy. Now, this guy is part of the goons. Now, I don't know. He's I the think, straight guy in the goons. Well, yes, but calling him straight because he's a fool. No, yeah, he is a fool. But um, Because he's Blood the guy. say, you silly, twisted fool, you know. Yeah. But he, in the, I only remember one, one, get one line that uh, struck out for me. They were in the jungle, and uh, they had no food. Uh, they had, they were in the jungle, and it was uh, um, for some story. I don't know. I think they were laying pipe, or they're trying to to do something like the the Suez Canal. And they're laying pipe in the jungle. I think that was something. You, like you've that. got three stories all mixed up already. You all right, I've got on, three stories going. mixed up. Push on. Anyway, one of the lines was. Uh, 
yeah, yeah, the, we were in the jungle for 30 days and 30 nights, and, and then our food ran out, and you hear these footsteps. Yeah, and that's the and food running out. And then he shouted out, come back, food! <laughs> he does a lot of shouting. He's got a yes. really loud, loud voice. And he's always, you know, a bit like me, bursting into song, but really loud. He used to come out here on the um, Mike Walsh show, I think, and do appearances where he'd sing a song for the, the Blue Rinse set and come there on by bus. And um, I guess you have to be there. I, why am I talking about that? Well, I used to watch a lot of those shows because guess what? Guess who didn't go to school? Me. Um, and why didn't you go to school? Uh, along many stories. Oh, you were bullied. Um, yeah, let's we'll leave because that for you, another day. Because you were a um, right-handed artist, not a left-handed artist. Uh, I don't think they really cared that, whether that, you're that, right-handed you get or out left-handed. That you get out of a card, a school card. Is it having a left-handed? I think you had. I a, didn't go to Catholic school. I had a school, remarkable. So I, never... I had a remarkable mother because she didn't burn me comics like all my other mates. But your mother was pretty remarkable. She let you stay home. Um, yeah, but... And she took you to Peter Sowell's movies, apparently. Yeah, she did. Um, yeah, prob- well, it's probably not a good thing for little kids, but, um, yeah, I don't know, she's... Uh, so, she but she did encourage you to, like, for instance, the, the goons just be on at uh, 12 o'clock mm. every Saturday. What do you mean? Uh, uh, on, on the radio. The... Ah, okay. And you'd rush to the radio to say to hear the goons. I only listen to radio um, in the mornings on um, 2UE, I think it was sort of something oh, like that. John Laws, eh? No, Bob Rogers. And, oh, um, Bob Rogers. Gee, you, Sammy going Sparrow. Back, going back now. Gary O'Callaghan. He was a DJ, Bob Rogers. Mm. What was that television show he used to do? Bob Rogers? Yeah, he used to compare a show. Music show. You, you're mixing him up with get, with uh, Brian Henderson. No, Brian Henderson did another thing. He, he did a teenage um, show. I have no idea. Oh, well. Jimmy Hannon, maybe. No, uh, Bob Rogers has been around longer than those guys. Yeah. Anyway, it doesn't really matter if you. Apparently, he had a good uh, interview with the Beatles, which yeah, uh, that's he, right. Well, he was he the loved. top DJ in in Australia at the time, so. Actually, did he go around with them? I think he went around with them, I, didn't he? I have no idea. Yeah. Um, he, there were big news then. He anyway, wasn't a crazy. So he wasn't been... a crazy DJ. He was sort of no. He's not Wolfman Jack or any. Yeah, any he cool was respectable. DJ. Well, he yeah, kind of. This is your after dark, this doggy. Bring in the kids, you know. Yeah. Well, yeah, he was, but he did have a good sense of humour. A so dulcet tone. Um, nice dulcet tone. He wasn't uptight. No. He was out of sight. No, and he played pretty uh, middle of the road sort of music. I thought. No, I. I, well, I thought. I don't know. I. Th- he, I, thought I don't think were... he. I don't think he interviewed Frank Zappa for a start. I can't remember. It's interesting how it's lifted already. I can't remember where those were. eyes. You know. Why are we talking about Bob Rogers? There's. Um... I don't know. The eyes have lifted already. They really come mm. out. You know. So. Um... Well, yeah, but you and, have to and establish the actual hierarchy pupils. Of light the ap- and dark. actual pupils are smaller than they are from the photo. So, but you've yeah. got that manic quality. Well, let's try to repair it. See, where there's a lot of uh, his eyes are wider than whiter than this, but yeah. I don't want to make them white white all over. So I want to try to make a difference so I can get a sparkle uh, difference, yeah. like porcelain. You know, you can see us highlight on white plates. Um, even though they're white, uh, I'll show you what I mean. I know I've what got you mean. This white here. I know what porcelain is. Pen. You know what porcelain oh, is? Oh yeah. Been hit by many plates. Yeah. Seen many flying saucers. So, there you go. That's what I mean. White on white. Yes. One's like snow. The other's more like milk. So you can tell them apart. Uh huh. Are you are you singing something from the Muppet Show? No, Oklahoma. Oh, okay. It was a sorry with the fringe on top. Oh right. I did watch the Muppet Show. I liked it. Hmm. I think the best thing about the Muppet Show was the the Swedish. Um, no, that's uh, the yeah the cook. Muppet Show. Yeah, Swedish Chef. Yeah, I thought, more, and, more. and the two old blokes. I thought that was the best thing about it. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. And of course, the Cookie Monster. He was terrific. No, he was from. He's not cookie, from, Cookie. Well, that's from Sesame Street, which is there. Oh their well, kids show. they all come from the same. Um, yeah. Stable. Mm. Yeah, except um, Fuzzy wasn't on the. I like Fuzzy. Did you? Waka waka waka. I thought he was a bit. <laughs> I thought he was a bit of a bit of a wacker myself. Oh, I loved him. I had a a fuzzy bear um, toy for for years until my kids destroyed it. I'll have to buy it again. He reminded me of a drunk Humphrey the Bear. That's what he reminded me of. Okay. Not really a big Humphrey B. Bear fan. I did watch... um, I did watch uh, Fat Cat and Friends because the girl on it was cute. <laughs> oh, um, the Fat Cat was, um, uh, you know... Um, not Patsy, the other one. People are going to say, you mean Patsy with the guitar? No, not Patsy. I like Patsy, but no, this other one was cuter. Um, let's let's talk more well, about... I can feel the, the muscles already in that picture. I yeah. can feel the... the the stress on his proboscis. No, no, just the, those cheeks in particular. Yeah. So you know, with regards to texture, right? So you're mm. adding um, shine to things that have meaning. Mm. The meaning is that they're shiny. <laughs> the meaning is that there's like oil glands and things like that around the eyes. So there's a lot of flesh. Oil glands. You heard it here first. Yeah. There's a lot of oil oily. glands in a caricature show. Yeah, there's a lot of caricature show. All your glands up. Caricature show. Welcome to the caricature show. Which is a character of a caricature show. So, um, well, let's tell me more about uh, this guy. Blood knot. Blood knot. Well, no, this guy. That. This. I mean, the goons. I. I think the goons. Eckley. Personally. Ah. Yeah, who found this one? That's. that's that's Peter Sellers and that's Spike Milligan. I talk to the tweet. Yeah. That's why they put me away. Yeah, they put me away. Yeah. Mm. Oh. Eccles. Yeah. Eccles is um, pretty dumb. Really stupid. I mean, one of the yeah. funniest gags of all, they somebody gave him a seaplane. And, of course, you don't fly a seaplane over the land. You fly it over water. So they're in America and they're digging a channel from one side of America to the other. That's the one. And they're going to clean up. I know, you, you've mixed up three stories in once. You know? Well, there you go. And they're digging away and you hear all this wonderful soundtrack of digging and then you hear it hit something like a rock. Yep. What up? What up? Oh. And he lifts it up and you hear the dirt moving and he says, Oh, good God, man. The skulls, four million years old. Mm. Happy birthday <laughs> to you. <laughs> and it was just extreme, right off the tree sort of humour. Mm. And there was nothing like it in American or Australian. I mean, yeah. you had knockabout comedians, but these guys were just... Mm. I can't... Uh, they, to I remember... Me, uh, to me, they, they, they were witty yeah. and funny, and you didn't... Half the time you didn't know what you were la- why you were laughing. Mm. It, it's not a conscious thing. Well, it's the investment that they made in the in the jokes. So yeah. sometimes the jokes not all that funny, but they invested but, so much energy. But there's a lot of stuff. I mean, they scripted it, but also yeah. they used to just ad lib. That's an off. interesting thing too, because I, I want to know whether they are actually all scripted or whether there is. Oh no, no, they of, were uh, scripted roughly, but yeah. there was a lot of ad lib. Ad lib. That's yeah. what I'm thinking about. And, and the know, thing is, um, George Martin did mm. all the sound effects, and they're terrific. Mm. You know, like doors opening and all that sort of... I mean, he had the whole mm. BBC... Um, and the sound thing effects, is, uh, the, for the goons to be on the BBC was just so shocking because mm. The, mm. the BBC mm. was like the epitome of upper, cru- up, upper, upper lip of Britishness, you know? Yeah. And the goons were the craziest humour. I, I personally think that the goons have never been bettered, and all the humour that mm. came out of Britain after the goons is... And they'll all, all tell you this. The they'll all tell you this. It's in spite of them all. Mm. All the all the people like John Cleese, you know, the, the whole um, Python team will tell you this. Yeah. There's a very good doco on. Oh, I don't know what it's called. It's on YouTube, and John Cleese um, uh, he actually narrates it, and he's on camera sometimes too. 
and it goes into it. But these guys met in the army during the war, and of course there were some crazy things happened during wartime, and also in institutions like the army. And so they used to send it all up to sort of survive it mm. and stop going nuts. Mm. And, of course, uh, a lot of humour is... Well, they had a lot of reviews and things, didn't yeah. they? Musical yeah, but they... Reviews I mean, these guys are facing death and all that sort of stuff. So, stuff. Yeah, these guys are facing death, so they just go for it, mm. you know? There's, and, you know, the Britain, Brits are known for their sort of, um, you know, their, their, their composure... Um, 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 well, in, in certain classes, it's a very class. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Centric society. Yeah, very, very. So, Probably you know, you the most class. Um, upper class, and then you get middle class, and and then you get the lower and, class. And da- downstairs. Yeah, but you get a lot of humour based on that class yeah. structure. Oh, yeah. Actually, every film I ever saw um, that's come out of Britain doesn't matter what the subject matter; it's all mm. about class. Mm. Class is actually the 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 subplot. The the it's, subtext of all, all the all yeah, because it's where you live, right? Yeah, it's like you yeah. live. You got neighbours, or were you local, your middle class? So if, you know. I remember when I was in London, I knocked on the they door. They do it today. I could watch things. People referring to wealth yeah. as class, you know, like uh, uh, comedians like Jimmy Carr or somebody, and and um, like he's wealthy, and you know, people make fun of of they make class jokes. Yeah. Uh, because he's well dressed and and things like that, it's it's a, it's still apparent today. Rich comedians making class jokes. Yeah. So is, is that no, funny? he doesn't make class jokes. They make class jokes at hi, at him. Oh, okay. Other comedians. Oh, yeah. On his shows and that make yeah. class jokes about yeah. him. So it's it's all it's evident today. You know, it's a it's a thing that mm. people can can uh, poke fun at. It's you know it's. I don't know. It's sort of a universal... hasn't gone away. So it's a universal truth, perhaps. Well, anyway, the goons were extremely over the top, mm. to put it mildly. Mm. And um, I just used to... I, I found myself laughing at the whole situation, the mm. music. They had great music, mm. um, dramatic music, and it was all sent up. Everything was sent up, you know? And didn't they have, like, a, a radio shows that have an interruption music? They have, like... Um, and now is uh, Jimmy, oh, yeah. Jimmy Dorsey with his orchestra. Yes, they had that too. They had, uh, what's his name, Ray... Ray Hadley. No, no Ray. Ray. <laughs> Ray Hadley. God, Martin. you can take Sydney, you can boy out of Sydney, you can't take Sydney out of the boy, can mm. you? I wish you could, though. Um, what's um, Ray mm. and his trio? Uh, he played the... Um, anyway, I can't remember his name, but he played uh, um, Mouth Organ. Mm. And um, Ray, Ray Ed, up, Edgerton, bum. Ray Ed, yeah, that guy, yeah, who did, uh, and he used to do some of, of the that. voices. He he'd do the sort of the African king voices sometimes. Right, he had a deep voice. Yeah, he had a deep voice. He did. Yeah, and this guy had a deep voice, and he he actually it's funny because he's such a crazy zany character, mm. and yet he had this uh, career as a serious singer. Mm. Of, of especially of um, of religious songs in particular, ah, he, you know, know I, I think he sold more of his Christmas albums. No, yes, but also singing songs of praise, you know. Right. Um, so he's this crazy, crazy yeah, diabetes zany guy. too. I remember mean, <laughs> he did a, some yeah some ads for di- you know diabetic yeah. foundation. But for a guy. Uh, who was so one of the goons to have this other... I mean, Peter Sellers went on... I mean, Peter Sellers did all these impersonations Mm. and he played all these different roles, even in in the same film. Mm. Um, And Spike went on to do his form of humour and Spike is actually the the glue to to both of... uh, you know, to the goons. He's the Mm. guy that came up with that extraordinary... Well, he uh, allows them to get surreal, you know. I mean, they wouldn't get surreal without... Yeah, but his his humour is so... I mean, you know... Um, it's funny because he's written so many funny things and yet um, mm. what has gone down in history already, and he's only been dead about 10 years, is that mm. um, on his grave it's got, I told him I was sick. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's just one of his gags. He was cracking before he died. Yeah. But that's what people know him as. But, I mean, you have to explore, like I grew up with, with his humour 
and you absorb it over a lifetime. But for, for people who don't know about Spike Milligan, you've just got to check him out. He's, he's just... He is the, the soul of the goons, mm. you know. Anyway, um, yeah, this guy, he had a really loud voice and I think he spent a lot of time moving away from the microphone because I think he, he, he'd, he'd blow all the metres. Yeah. And he played the, he played the fool... Um, he played the. I mean, the, both both him and Eccles were, were the really dumb ones, but he played the straight fool. Mm. Yeah. So Eccles Eccles is the hillbilly style. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. The village idiot. He's the one wearing the um, he's the one wearing the hillbilly hat. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Let's not talk about all that stuff. That's okay. all geography. Let's, not... Let's talk about Harry Seacombe. Yeah. So I'm I'm enjoying this uh, uh, experience of of drawing. Well, it's Harry. a very meaty face, hasn't yeah, it? I'm glad I picked very this. Very meaty, um... very fleshy and meaty. Yeah. So and you haven't finished again, yet either. Not yet. But again, mm. the fleshy, meaty, you know, this sort of stuff. It's like playing with putty or or it does uh, look like play doh. You do you yeah. tend to create something that's that has a textural food element to it. So without going into any disgusting. Um, so you could bite it. You could take you a could bite out of this drawing. Out of his Is that cheeks, what you're saying? Yeah. You could take a bite out of this drawing. Yeah. So you're you're actually constructing something that has a visceral, um, tactile quality. So that's the reason why children um, and some adults poke their tongue out and while, some they're, adults. while they're uh, working because they are reflecting on how yummy the face is that they're drawing on the subject they're drawing. Oh. They're just thinking about the eating or squeezing or manipulating the shapes. So when you think of food, you tend to froth at the mouth. Is that connected yeah. to it? Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, it's kind of a very primal uh, uh, thing, I uh, guess. Primal is a good word. All children have a, have a tendency to... Yeah, they're very primal. God. Yeah, they have a tendency to be uh, quite connected to their um, um, stomachs. <laughs> children and dogs. I think most people are connected to their stomachs, but that's another story. Yeah, but... Yeah, but uh, I think more... Primarily, they're connected to their stomachs. Mm. Yes, and he came to Australia, and it was a film... Um, the government was running out of school teachers, oh. and they advertised for nurses and teachers separately to come from England, because they only wanted English people, obviously. The white Australia policy was still going on. Uh -huh. And um, so they decided to make a film... Um, about it, and um, he plays a, a Brit that comes over to Australia to teach because they're after they were shortage of teachers. This at is that before stage. the weird mob. No, it's after the weird mob. After the weird mob. The weird mob is sixty one or sixty two. Yeah, um, I love that film. That was the best seller of the fifties in Australia. That that novel. Yeah. Um, Nino Colotti, Colotta. Colotto. Yeah, Colotta. Colotta. Mm. Colotta. Glotto, I can't remember. But that was the nom de plume of um, the bloke who wrote it. Yeah. Who had an Irish name. I forget his name now. He had an Irish name. Anyway, no, and it, uh, it's called, the film's called Sunstruck. Mm. And it's on the premise that British people, because it's always raining and the clouds are always overhanging and all that sort of stuff. They come here to turn pink. No, they, they, they follow the sun. They do. The Brits follow the sun. Right. They, um, mad, like mad dogs and Englishmen. Well, they do. They follow the sun. Um, mm. when, when Melbourne built its first um, airport, or a second airport, the jet port um, in Tullamarine, um, a lot of English people came out here mm -hmm. and stayed. And uh, uh, most of them lived in uh, Sunbury, where I used to spend the time. And they, Sunbury was uh, the first satellite city in Australia. And it, it was just a... A uh, sleepy old town, um, but then uh, during the the building of the airport, it took a long time to do. Um, oh, gee, this is really good. The highlights. Of, this is really good. I hate to say nice things about you, but this is really good. So um... anyway, so um, they they stayed and um, mm. they liked the sun, and there's a lot of sun in Australia. Yeah. So it was called Sunstruck. Right. But uh, no one's seen the film. It's like an Australian film. It's sort of... No one sees them. Well, that's not exactly true. What do they see? Well, they saw Dundee. Gallipoli, as the Americans call it. And they love Picnic at Hanging Rock. Yeah. And the cars that ate Paris. Okay. I'm saying films that you know. Mm. <laughs> film, films that I know? Yeah. Okay. I won't use films that you don't know, because you, know, you obviously didn't... Um, Australian... Oh, did you see... Um, I saw he Hedda. Did you see Razorback? Um, yep. 
Oh, because that's a horror like, film. Yeah, I like to raise it back. Yeah, yeah. I used to, I One saw, of the few um, people in the world who liked the, it, yeah. Ser- the, not the Searchers, what's it called? The Sundowners, I like that. Well, that's uh, Fred Zinnemann. That's an American film. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. Well, Deborah Carr's in it, she's terrific. Hmm. Robert Mitchum? Well, he's all right too, but the Australian accent. Yeah. I, Peter I think Ustinov's you're a little, in being, it too. a little bit unkind. What? I thought the Australian accent was was No, he, him doing an Australian accent. It was all right. It's okay. Uh, you know, people sort of... I like, I like it's him. It's not an ochery like accent. It's not a bushy accent. It's a very, you know, subdued accent, which I thought would, uh, would work. The kid bothered me in that movie. The son, his accent you're stank. A ki- you're a kid botherer, you are. He huh? stank. You're that a guy. kid botherer. You don't like Oh, kids. my God. That's, uh, you know, you talk about accent. Yeah, that I one, know. Really yeah, but, but kids... P-P-U. <laughs> P-U. That was awful. Yeah. What about Smiley? You seen Smiley? I love Smiley. The, the kid was good in that. Yeah. Was he English too? No, he's Did Australian. He Aussie. Was he? Okay. Yeah. That's another British film. Yeah. With Australian actors in it. I actually, Australian um, actors in that really um, shine. They're, they're, it's a it's a good it's a good um, it's a good feeling. Film. A little boy a called nice, Smiley. Yeah, they had the English. It's funny they had crooner. they had the song um, a Smiley. Get, they made a second film called Smiley Get Your Gun. Yeah, and it's about drug running. <laughs> yeah, it's a kids' film in yeah. the fifties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he he's he's doing jobs to he's giving. Drugs he's to, taking drugs to people because he, yeah. he's getting money for... Aborigines, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, he's getting money for, um, for mm. doing these errands. Yeah. Because he wanted to a gun. To pay for a rifle, air Yeah, rifle. that's right. Yeah. No, I think it was a real one. Was it? Yeah. Would they give a real gun to a kid for That's right. Well, you know, Australia, what do you expect in the, in the 50s? Yeah. My God, look at him. This is what you call a caricature. So... Um, some more uh, Harry Seacombe stuff, some more goons things. Because the reason well, why we're doing these I three think he was, is really I, because in of In England, the goons. he had a special place he because he was loved. He was loved as a character. They loved him. I mean, you know, you talk about Welsh and they sing and all that sort of stuff. That's yeah. true. I mean, the miners used to sing underground. <laughs> Do they? Yeah. It's kind of creepy, but. Uh... I thought they. Have you thought uh, of doing... I thought they sang across valleys, like how green was my valley? <laughs> you know, they sang across the valley. Well, I mean, across but, the screen. But screen they did that or in Bulgaria you too. That, that, what do they call the dead stuff they dig out of the ground? The dead coal. The dead slag. Coal. Is that slag? No, the slag is what's left. Yeah, that big piles of. I've slag. never heard slag called dead coal. I don't know. That's that, coal. That one point. You, pro- you, you probably can't the, make any. The first person in history that ever actually said that. I'm impressed. You slag. Well, that's right. You piece of re- re- refuse. Mm. You bit of coal. Um, yeah. Um, it's the funniest joke I heard for a long time was um, on the Abbott and Costello radio show, which I was listening well, to. Well, they don't use words like slag in America, do no, they? No, no, no. They, they, um, he was cussing. He was, he was cursing somebody. On radio? Was, yeah, did, no, he's cursing somebody and he's t- talking about, oh, you tale of two cities, you, um, you know, this, you, that. He was, you know, why'd you, why'd you say that, Costello? I was giving him the dickens. Uh, yes, okay, I'll pay that. So dickens meant something, it obviously, the, at the time. It was the best of jokes, it was the worst of jokes. Yeah. Oh look, this is lovely. I I hate to patch on the back. um, You know what we're going to do next, don't you? Now, because we've done this uh, so many times before, we've done the Stooges, we've done the um, Marx Brothers. Yes. The Blessed Trinity of humour: the Goons, the the Free Stooges, and the Marx Brothers. Yeah, but who's on first? Um, What's on second? And I don't know who's on third. So we're going to do Abbott and Costello um, pretty soon. Are because we? Because I love them. How, how pretty soon is that? Well, very soon. How about, how about that? Mm. 
This is uh, Harry Seacombe. This is Franz Cantor, and my co-host is... Uh, Jim Bridges. And we'll say, and you want to sign off? Well, do you think we should change it? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, we'll see you on the flip side, but... 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 but uh, don't forget to... Um, subscribe. Subscribe. Yeah, don't forget to subscribe. But yeah. I was, more than that, I thought we were going to end with a... A, um, a goon thing. A goon thing, yeah. Oh, I, I was waiting for you to, 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 to blacken his tongue. Nah, look at that. Boy, I hate to say that, but that's a bloody good drawing. That's so, a bloody good drawing. This has been a lot of fun. This is before, yeah. and this is after. Yeah. And uh, this is Harry Seacob. So catch you. Ying tong 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 ying tong